thank you for having me join you today. My name is Danielle Cartney and I'm the branded dessert category lead at Nestle Professional. Today, I'm really excited to be here to talk about the growing category of sweet bakery and how you can delight consumers and brands to really maximize the category opportunity. So today I'll be covering at a high level some of the content from our Nestle Professional Report, Sweet Baked Goods, Evolving Tastes and Trends. I'll explain the market dynamics, evolving consumer behaviours, and I'll re reveal where the category opportunities lie, particular in out of home and using brands. In the UK market, we as consumers, we love to snack. In fact, we spend over 19 billion pounds every year on our snacks. They're an affordable luxury and it's something permissible that we can indulge in um, when we're cutting back on other expenditures. Confectionery remains the largest segment within snacking, but Sweet Bakery is hot on its tail and it's rapidly gaining interest with consumers who are looking for a treat. In fact, in out of home, Sweet Bakery is now the largest segment and has overtaken confectionery in terms of spend. There are a number of category drivers um, fueling the growth. So when it comes to key metrics, frequency is up 19%. Average spend per pack is up 9.4% and penetration is up 9.2%. Overall, the category is showing strong growth in all metrics. The category resilience has been impressive that despite the cost of living crisis, we have attracted more shoppers, spending more and indulging more often. There are three key occasions that are driving this category growth. The first is social occasions. So consumers are using the sweet bakery category to connect with friends and loved ones. So portionability is really important for them during these moments. The second occasion is enjoyment. Taste and enjoyment continue to be important moments for the category. Cake bars in particular have boomed in recent years, bridging the gap between confectionery and cake. They offer many textures and flavors, not to mention the easy ability to eat on the go. Then the third occasion, which is really growing, is the morning occasion. So consumption of baits at the baits category in the mainland Europe over indexes and fuel in the morning. Um, and in the UK, we've seen demand for muffins increasing by over 55% in out of home in the last year alone. This suggests that consumers in the UK are now starting to use the category more so for that morning fuel occasion. So the morning is really important. There's a clear correlation between the occasions which are growing and the types of bakery products which are in growth. If we look at some of the growing segments, other cakes and brownies remains the largest subcategory within bakery, making up 28% of the category. So cake bars in particular are tapping into this enjoyment occasion that we talked about just a moment ago. If we now turn to muffins, so muffins are the fastest growing subcategory within bakery growing 55% in out of home. They now account for over 10% of the category. Muffins are particularly tapping into the morning day part, again, tapping back into those three key occasions. And then if we look at, at cookies, um, they're often sold in a pack format that encourages sharing and they're fueling growth of 41%. So any of the other subcategories within bakery uh, that can greater meet the needs of sharing are likely to steal some of this growth that cookies are enjoying. The retail environment has grown, but not as fast as out of home. It's only growing 4.6%. So the big supermarkets are losing share to convenience and discounters. We conducted panel research to understand where products that are bought in retail are consumed. And surprisingly, 70% were bought for consuming outside of the home they're buying them in retail and taking them into out of home. So in order to capitalize on the out of home growth, retailers, in particular the supermarkets, need to understand where it is that consumers are actually consuming the products that they're buying in store and making sure they have the right range for those occasions. Because after all, most of the consumption isn't happening inside the homes. 
So who are these shoppers? In the UK, um, 70% of the adult population participates in the sweet bakery category. So we've got 37 million shoppers who shop the category. They're skewed slightly older, with 68% of them being over 35 years old. 61% of shoppers are buying for their own consumption. And of all of the snacking categories, it is the most likely to be purchased for sharing. So again, really important for that share and connect. 62% of the shoppers are ABC1. So they're slightly more affluent shoppers in the out of homes. And then 52% are female. So a fairly even gender split. We've also had a look at where they're spending in an out of home. And unsurprisingly, coffee shops has the greatest share of the spent. The channel is synonymous with Sweet Bakery. They execute drinks links very well to upsell. They also invest a significant portion of their marketing activation on the Sweet Bakery category. What was a little surprising was QSR, because the channel makes up quite a small amount of the total category spend. However, given that they have such a high spend of the out of home total spend, um, and they have such high footfall, there really is a category opportunity for this channel. So if they get the right range and the right activation, QSR could definitely have a larger slice of the pie. So why do consumers buy into Sweet Bakery and at what time of day? Having a treat or reward is one of the top reasons for choosing Sweet Bakery. In fact, it's become even more important post-pandemic, overtaking taste as a deciding factor. We conducted a Delve analysis measuring 41,000 online conversations across social networks, forums, and microblogs during mid last year. Chocolate is mentioned frequently when talking about muffins, brownies, cookies, and donuts. Sweet Bakery also appears to have a strong community connection as shown through the high frequency of hashtags such as hashtag support local and hashtag shop local. This reflects the popularity of coffee shops and bakeries as outlets of purchase, as many of these are often local. In terms of day parts, lunchtime is the most popular time to enjoy Sweet Bakery. The next two most popular occasions are mid-morning and mid-afternoon. So linking bakery to lunch deals and to hot drinks in before and after lunch can help to drive the category. Looking at the data at the bottom on days of the week, there is a clear pattern of consumption increasing as the week goes on, as reward becomes more important as we get closer to the weekend. I'm sure that we can all relate to having more treats, particularly on a Friday. So why brands? This is really fundamental to what we do at Nestle Professional, as this is our point of difference. Brands at trust, quality, and what to expect. In 2023, we asked consumers how they viewed branded products, and over two-thirds said the idea of a branded treat was appealing. As well as providing a reassurance of quality for most, branded goods are more likely to encourage them to try something new because they knew what to expect. So brands can help bakery manufacturers to try new formats with a safe adventure and a trusted brand. To learn how brands influence buying decisions, we used a social monitoring tool, Delve, to track approximately 41,000 online interactions about muffins, brownies, and cookies during mid last year. Over 1,800 of the mentions were branded, and these had an increase in positive sentiment versus non-branded. Consumers love brands, and when their favorite brands are brought into new categories, the category benefits from the brand love. <laughs> so combining our expertise, um, we, d we try to deliver successful collaborations and sweet bakery and desserts using our reputation as a global confectionery brand we're ex really excited to be working with Richie's and Cherry Tree Bakery to bring new ranges of branded bakery to UK food service and retail across a number of our iconic brands. We continue to innovate with our partners and we look forward to bringing more products to more consumers in 2024. At Nestle, we're committed to bringing tasty and balanced diets 
within the reach of billions today and for generations to come. So we work with our partners to help guide consumers towards balanced consumption through responsible portion sizing and clear nutritional information on pack. We work with our partners to meet the Public Health England guidelines. Yes. So what are the key takeouts from today that can help your business to sell more Sweet Bakery? Sweet Bakery is a dynamic and innovative market, which has shown exciting developments over the past year, fueling overall category growth. I've highlighted the key trends and dynamics driving that category growth. I've shared details on the major consumers and how food service operators and retailers can meet better their needs. Importantly, brands play a key role in driving category growth by increasing trust and quality for consumers. We're continually tracking trends, spotlighting tasty treats that satisfy consumers' needs, as well as the businesses that serve them. And we're keen to keep on exploring new collaborations so we can co-create exciting products that delight consumers in out of home and in retail within their homes. Thank you so much for dialing in to join me today and listen to my presentation. If you'd like to see more details on the full report, please use the QR code on your screen. I'd now like to open the floor for any questions on the Sweet Bakery category, brands, or on our Sweet Baked Goods report. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Danny, for presenting um, those insights into the Sweet Bakery category here at Bakery Live. Why did you want to talk about this category? That's a really great question. Um, we've been in ice cream toppings for over 15 years, and um, ice cream is a great and exciting category. But we know that a lot of customers do actually buy our um, branded ingredients and use them in other applications. Um, and particularly online, we saw that a lot of people were using them in bakery applications. So we really wanted to understand the bakery category better um, so that we could actively really start to have great conversations um, with our customers, with our partners, um, and actively make a decision to, to try to move into the bakery space and bring our brands uh, to delight our consumers. So I can imagine that was a real driving force behind deciding to conduct this report. It was. So I suppose back of house for us, um, trying to understand the category better, we learned a lot of things, a lot of things that we thought actually we can make a real difference when it comes to the bakery category. So we put this report together to, to try to share that so that we could open the dialogue and, and create a conversation around the category because we really want to, to be a, a big part um, of the bakery category. I think what was interesting um, was quite early on in your presentation, you mentioned that the, the category has proven itself to be quite resilient um, in spite of the cost of living crisis. Could you talk about how you've seen it impact um, on Sweet Bakery and consumer purchasing behaviours? Yeah, so um, we're a confectionery business um, as well. And um, we so we know a lot about snacking and What's interesting and is mirrored very much with the confectionery category is that um, when we're in times of recession, uh, consumers will cut back on all of those big purchases. They might not go on the big holiday. They might not upgrade the car like they thought they were, but people still want little rewards. Um, so actually snacks become really important and sweet snacks much more so than savory snacks because sweet snacks are rooted in so much enjoyment, so much pleasure they're really used for those treat occasions. So actually confectionery and also sweet bakery are categories that do really well because consumers reach for the category because it is those little permissible indulgences that they can afford, those affordable luxuries. Yeah, I, th I think it's great to to be reminded of the role that, as you say, confection bakery play. Um, yeah. Consumers to indulge. Um, have you seen um, seasonal periods affecting this category in particular? What, what have your observations been? Um, yeah, so obviously, like I mentioned, we do a lot of ice cream toppings, which is hugely seasonal, as you can imagine, uh, very much with um, summer peaks and trots. Um, I suppose when it comes to bakery, it has, because of the breadth of the category, 
it doesn't really have that seasonality in the same way. There'll be certain flavors, of course, which are seasonal. Um, so more fruity flavors, perhaps in the summer, um, more rich in indulgence in the winter. But overall, the category does remain fairly resilient um, and quite stable throughout the year. And what was interesting to see in your presentation as well was talking about how you tracked consumer conversations around Sweet Bakery. What made you decide to do this um, online, to track these conversations online? Yeah, and I suppose this comes back to a lot of qual versus quant um, research. You can get quite a lot of qualitative data from things like consumer groups, but you've got a very small sample size. So we often use uh, various social listening tools uh, to try to understand on like a broader spectrum um, what a bigger proportion of the population thinks. So uh, the Delve analysis was um, a reasonably quick um, and more cost efficient way to try to verify some of the hypotheses that we had from from more qual research that we had done. So social media is um, becoming a really useful tool to see how people respond to bakery. It is. And I think also back to those earlier comments about how much um, there is this deep rooted enjoyment in the category because it's linked to so many positive sentiments. They're things which are Instagrammable, that, that consumers want to talk about um, these sweet bakery moments that they have, uh, particularly when I was mentioning earlier that um, around the share and connect. So very much consumers are using the, the category more so uh, for those sharing and connecting moments. And again, their moments that they want to capture and share on social media. And finally, Danny, you you, you spoke about brands um, being a great opportunity um, to to entice consumers. How how much would you say brand familiarity is playing a role in the baked goods consumers choose to purchase? Um. I think more so, um, and I think it's not just us; it's our competitors as well. We're seeing more and more products um, which are made specifically for baking. So there's more options um, in the market. Um, but again, I think a lot of it's also driven by consumers um, in terms of the products that they might bake at home as well um, and seeing them out and about. So I think that I think we're going to see more and more brands um, in this space over the coming years. That certainly sounds very exciting. Thank you, Danny, um, for taking the time to speak with me here at Bakery Live and for offering us a glimpse into the growing sweet bakery category. Brilliant. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I hope that you will enjoy the full report.